which this is take three. Are you, um, is, is that specific to this or are you using it for multiple platforms? Uh, it's specific to take three. Okay. Yeah, and that's, that's me. Um, that's my website. I do all the reviews. Are you, do you, do you go by any moniker? Are you the, uh, the take, uh, take three and eight or what do you go by on take three? You know, I just go by Dee Dee, um, but sometimes the hubby comes on as the masked critic. Love it. So he's on there sometimes. Yeah. Okay. We'll be, yeah. we'll be, uh, we'll be aware of the, and he, does he wear a mask when he comes on? Good. Yeah. Yeah. That would kind of go against the grain. Okay. Yeah, he wears a wrestling mask. It's really funny. It's perfect. It's it's does he actually review? Does he get into it? He does. He does. He reviewed Doctor Sleep. So oh, you know, wow. obviously the horror stuff he really likes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Doctor Sleep. That's uh, such an interesting movie. Yeah. It. it, it uh, did Did you see it? Yes. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I think it's pretty good. I think it's interesting. Uh, I read for it, I read the script and I was uh, feeling like I did want to do it and then I didn't get to do it. So sometimes I'm like, oh, fuck them. I'm, I'm not, they didn't want me, I don't want to go see it. But yeah, yeah I, think, I think I saw it on, a, uh, on an airplane, maybe my last flight, which might've been like January or something. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, you know, in Limbo, you got to work with one of my favorite actors of all time. Ah, there's so many of your favorite actors in this movie that's going to be hard to guess, but I am going, knowing you, I'm going to say Veronica Cartwright. Close, but no. Oh, Richard. I am, I am a British fan. Whoa. I, I love those Brits. So James. So you, you are a big James Purefoy fan. I oh, am. that's so interesting. I because am. Because he is, uh. He's amazing, but also can fly under the radar just for a little bit. Like you see yeah. him in a lot of things and then you don't really right. recognize. And he chameleons a little bit too. So for instance, to something like Happen Leonard, you don't really know he's British until you know, you know? Right. Which yeah, is, I loved him in the series Rome and just- Of course. You know, have fell in love with him back then. And it's when all of a sudden I see him as Lucifer, I was like, what? He's ideal, he's ideal. Um, you know, we had had a relationship with James. I had met him at a uh, rap party for Rome way back in London. Oh, uh, I, was, I was premiering the movie Domino okay. in London with, uh, with, with Kira Knightley and Tony Scott. And, and, and I slipped into a rap party for Rome and met nice. Purefoy, and, and we, we had a few adult beverages, and that was where we started our friendship. And then, you know, it ends around, and, and he uh, shows up on American television quite a bit. Yeah. And there was a film that we did. This is my fourth film with the writer and director, Mark Young. Oh, and, okay. And Mark uh, has a, a real interesting uh, voice that I resonate with. There's a certain intelligence to it that's outside of the box, that's a little smarter than the straight on cookie cutter formula. And so I really like that and it connects. And thankfully he likes my work, so he connects. So we did a film called Wicked Blood a few years ago with Abigail Breslin and Sean Bean, who I refer to as Scene Bean. Um, Sean Bean, and we used James Purifoy. So we started a, a, a friendship, a relationship with James, and then he happened to be in town, and we reached out if he would make a cameo playing Lucifer, which is perfect. So we gave him carte blanche to come in, but he, uh, he, he, he made a choice to make it very Bush, his Lucifer, very George W. Bush. And, and he's, you know, he's quite dismissive and Southern and, and <laughs> yep. very rascalian. And, and it's, it's, it's just perfect. You know, it's beautiful. And uh, yeah, he, he dismissed your attorney quite well. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. He, uh, he, you know, and he, he was just so caught up in the, in the machinations and it was so much fun until he drops in and takes the prosecuting attorney's hands and saying, are you sure? 
Yeah. You don't want to disappoint me. Are you sure? <laughs> and man, then it gets back into that really dark thing that he's very good at. And you know, you're like, oh, uh, shoot, yeah. So he's great. We're so lucky to have him. And I love, I love how he, he brought it. It was a lot of fun to have on set. And he didn't focus on the gnashing of the teeth and the rattling of the sabers. He had a number two for that. He had Peter Jacobson uh, Belial to do that right. on his behalf. And Peter, who's, uh, you know, he's a New York guy and he's so good at spitting dialogue. He's like David Mamet. Just da -da 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 -da. He's a lesson for actors that work on television. That's how you get rid of your dialogue. You spit it and land it and it's barbed and it's terse and it works. And so he let him do all that heavy lifting and he, he took yeah. the fun. So that was, it was delightful, beautiful, yes. That's great. Um, well, I entirely didn't see that coming, not unlike the, uh, the twist in the movie. So okay. well done, well done, Dee Dee, take three. I need a take three for, you know, <laughs> connecting with who you're rooting for in that movie. Right. I, yeah, it's, I, for some reason I'm, I'm drawn to the British guys and I, I just think they're so brilliant. So I well, was excited. That said, so we introduced a new Brit, uh, Lucian Collier is a British guy. Uh, and, and, uh, he's a liver Liverpoolian as they call themselves, uh, Liverpool or Manchester. I think he's Liverpool. Uh, he has a, it's a distinct accent. I was very interested in casting him. Originally, when I read the script for Limbo, uh, as you know, it's a courtroom drama with your soul right. being on uh, trial. Right. You're going north or you're going south. <laughs> Such an interesting proposition. And so in time, because we are rather in limbo with our, our current situation. So sure. uh, I read it and was really taken with it and thought it was so smart. And I thought, well, Mark, I think I would like to do the role of Balthazar. That's what, you know, the kind of disheveled, hard done, and hard boiled uh, prosecuting attorney, seen it all, done it all. He goes, you could nail it, you'd kill it. That being said, I think my instinct is to go opposite of that and go with a younger guy that is does have all of that aged uh, frustration, but also some teen angst and father issues. So I'd like to go younger. And I was like, my gosh, that's a great idea. Because we had even talked about using Richard Richard Riley, Riley in that part. Richard oh, really? Riley. Yeah, as the older, you know. But he's so likable and he's so charming. It's hard for him to come across Lou Grant-ish, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. because he's so delightful. So, so we found Lucian, uh, our casting director, Shannon McCainian, who, you know, she gets a lot of credit for bringing in these, these beautiful players. And he was ideal. It was perfect. It was a, it was a great call on Mark's behalf and, and the right choice. Yeah. Um, so, so we got two, two Brits in there. And then uh, the young lady, Lauren Canning, Canning, uh, who plays Angela, the hooker with a heart of gold. Um, she is uh, Irish. Oh. Full on. She is a Galway girl, full on. Really? And, uh, and able to mask that. Her brogues, she's able to mask her brogues. Just great, you know. Yeah. And it, it, was, it was lovely. So we had our uh, Anglophiles there. You'd have been, yeah. you'd have been feeling comfortable and having your spot of tea at 4 p.m. Yeah, dude. yeah, that would have been great. So how did, how did Mark um, come to you with this role? I mean, in this script? Well, then, you know, after he brought me the script, he usually brings me most of his scripts and, and I'm always fascinated and then we figure out how to go make them. Uh, after, and, and when we spoke about it and he said, I really actually wrote Jimmy for you. And I was like, oh, of course you did. And he goes, yeah, I just think there's some things there for you to do that you're not doing typically through the arc of the character. So he said, I, you know, I ask you to do it. Uh, we're really small and we don't have a lot of time or resource. That was another key because typically it's a, it's a very wordy piece and there's a lot of rehearsal that goes into the timing of that, even with just the hint of, of comedy, dark comedy that's in there, it right. still requires a certain rhythm of which we had no time to rehearse this. We just didn't have 
James Purifoy, for instance, <laughs> for a day to rehearse. You know, yeah. he's coming, he's showing up and dropping in and doing his thing, and then he's got to go. And we're happy to have him. So it was like that, typically. So again, Mark and his casting director were able to, Shannon McCainian, who works with him, were able to uh, identify actors who would come in on push play. Rob Zombie does this too. Actors that he knows, I'm not gonna have to work with them. They're gonna get it. They're gonna bring some, some bean dip for the, for, for the chips. Uh, I know how it's gonna go and, and they're, gonna, they're gonna nail it. And so he really focused on that type of, of actors all the way through. And um, uh, so he, he, he asked me if I would do Jimmy and then uh, do a few different things, come up with some different things with Jimmy, um, which were really interesting, but very challenging. So typically uh, in the movie, you're in this box, not unlike we are right now. And there's, right. Not, a lot of, there's not a lot of wiggle room, <laughs> but you've got to make it more than just talking heads and engaging. Sure. And there were times where we had to uh, adjust what we got going on and, and leave frame and, you know, and, and do different things in the dynamic of our space in the courtroom drama. And then we were free when we got out into the flashback scenes of the reality. Right. But in, in this purgatory, in this limbo, Mark was really good about letting me know that my instincts were not I couldn't rely on those. So my character typically being a, a propensity towards violence would want to push or hit or throw or grab this Balthazar and slap him around or, or, and none of that plays in limbo. It's entirely removed. So all of that has to play through uh, bewilderment, through confusion. Uh, where am I? How'd I get here? Who am I? What's happened? Who are you? You're what? You, I'm where you've got to be kidding to to disbelief to maybe buying in and then and then engaging in this this courtroom drama with some hope and getting my hope up and and then recognizing it's not looking too good uh, uh, I'm doing my taxes maybe I got some other receipts hold on let me look uh, you know the cover okay and wow and so all of these things had to sort of play emotionally with subtlety, uh, which is challenging. And then when I get out in the real world, I can make a lot of bad choices through violence and through decision making. Although there's a scene that was really important to me with, uh, with Lauren, uh, uh, Angela, who's the girl next door, happens to be a prostitute, and her manager, um, who happens to be her pimp. Uh, and it would seem that he and I are going to, you know, engage yeah. in a physical thing. And, and we really worked, I really worked on restraint there because that was going to inform where I was going to end up in limbo. And so that was a good scene. So yeah, this was entirely challenging. I'm really proud of, of how everyone did with their, you know, coming in and, and bringing it their self to the party it was great yeah i thought you really had it there at the end i know I it. It, was, it was a it was a win and i'm you know look we're uh it's like that guy that won the oscar a couple years ago and he's got it and he's thanking his wife and then uh way I, I i i read the wrong envelope i'm just oh geez. <laughs> yeah so close uh, yes and so yet close. entirely far away so that was uh, important was Mark's twist and for us to land the win and then take it away uh, about what the real win is, which right. is, uh, which I, I'm hoping that people don't see it coming. So, well, so what do you, what do you hope people get out of this film? Well, I do hope that people understand, um, that you, you, your life, is lived uh, on that dash between, you know, 19, 1969 to 2000 and whatever. And your life is lived on that dash and that there, therefore is the judgment of what it will be. And that you live a life that is um, accountable. You know, you're accountable uh, as much to yourself as to, 
uh, the afterlife, as it were. So I think, um, and that, and that it's the choices you make on that dash that will, that will be judged, unfortunately. Um, and so, you know, it's, uh, and, and then at the end, it may not be the one thing. It may not be cheating on the SAT that, that has the biggest effect on you. It may, uh, it may be something else that you aren't expecting. So expect the unexpected. Um, and I think it's just a great idea of, you know, if somebody was going to observe your life with a with a judgment how how would it go what would they see what would you want them to see and what would you cringe and go oh not not proud about that you know I'm, I'm not, not happy about that it's a little bit like your phone right i mean all of the all of our secrets are on this thing you know and you right. just hand it over to your your mom your husband your wife really uh <laughs> So a little bit, this is a little of our purgatory, I think. A lot of judgment on that phone. Yeah, you know, it was great because it's such an original story. Mm. But I, I liked that. And you said that you've worked with Mark before. So yes, four times. Four times. Four are times. You, are you going to work with him again? Absolutely. He's, uh, I can rely on him to do something outside of the box. And... Um, I think he's very underrated. I don't think that he gets enough acknowledgement publicly because if he got a little bit more acknowledgement publicly, he would then escalate his production value and he'd be able to do uh, bigger things with more of his imagination. So, uh, and I think that, you know, some guys can't get past their place because that's where they're comfortable, but I think he actually could. So, uh, yeah, if he's got something and there's something in mind for me, I, I will do that. And I think he, um, you know, I think he's an independent filmmaker that recognizes how to continue to evolve. You know, he's evolved with like the camera. Um, the last couple that we've done, he's changed sort of, he changed his, his, uh, his camera, his camera operators. And and the shot the, the compositions changed and became better movement and better art direction and better lighting and filtered and more sense of feel. So I think all those things happen. And I think he's in an evolution as a storyteller. So I'm, I'm really pleased and, and, you know, watching him grow. And so, yeah, yeah I want limbo to get seen. I want it to be exposed so that he actually gets some, some credit for for making an interesting project for sure right. and it, i just think it's it's a good piece for right now and it's out today right it is out today on right. uh, it's, it's out right. available on dvd if you still have one of those uh turny disc players uh what is do, that i know do we still do that i don't know no. um but i'm told that we you know the the purists still have those, or at least uh, people run the Blu-ray out there. We used to have them on our uh, our laptops. There was a disk drive, uh, yep. of which we don't. Uh, but for you streamers, most of us, I think it's on uh, iTunes and Apple and Amazon uh, as well, at Google Play. Uh, so, you know, you can run it through maybe your game console and... Uh, and get a good a good look at it. Thanks. Yeah, today, today. Yeah, I'll, let's. Uh, yeah, let's definitely get that out there, so that people. I would watch. like to. Yeah, I think it's. I think it's. You know, it's. It's as you said. It's littered with a great cast. Um, Scotty Thompson is delightful. I think she's so good at being. Oh, she girl. was great. And she's lovely in her veneer, and then she's very sterile, but very uncertain, and and then you know. Uh, you know, she doubts herself. I think Lucian is great because he, you know, he's dismissive, but he's, he's angry. And then Richard, of course, is charming and he's just having the best time in this, this situation. And then yeah, all, what, the, a, all what a comedic relief he was. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, he would have jokes that were scripted, but then he'd bring in some of his own, which were also really good. And all of them were off color. None of them were... <laughs> 
what you call parlor jokes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and it was just, it was a lot of fun. You know, the movie has some dark comedy and he's definitely the, the leader of that. Definitely has some horror element through our demons and supernatural. Um, you know, we got a little, we've got a little darkness, a little death, little torture cells. We've got some, you know, elements. There's definitely some drama, some high drama, and some suspense because you're not knowing how it's going to go. It's, you know, it's the 12 angry men of your soul, right? Yep. Yep. So, so I'm, uh, I'm happy. Good. So what's next for you? Well, I think what's next, uh, interesting, I have another one that's out right now called Rook. And I think Rook is on uh, iTunes as well. And it's this crazy caper. It's a gold heist. And when I say gold, like an old fashioned mining gold heist, um, but it's gold dust. Like gold is still mined today, but it's, it's a big manufacturing company that does it. And they just, they, they take the, they find veins in these mountains and they just dig into these veins and pull the dust. And so this, this has a piece of that. And I'm, I have a cool little cameo on that. It's a little indie out of Colorado and Pikes Peak. And it's, oh. it's kind of fun. And uh, so I'm happy for that. And then in the fall, when, you know, we're at the height of summer right now, I'm told in August. But uh, I think in September, I always call that the fall. But um, in September, there's a movie that I produced uh, and starred in that I'm really excited about. It's called... Um, uh, time Crafters, Treasure of Pirate's Cove. And it's an old fashioned Goonies story. Oh. So it's a family adventure where we've got our pirates out of the 1700s that are transported via the old uh, time machine in the vortex of the storm. And they are uh, landing in Renaissance fair laden seaside town, America where the pirates fit right in amongst all the reenactors and they're looking for their, the time machine and their pirate treasure of which are five young 12 year old heroes find and hijinks and ensue. And, and we've got the villainous captain Lynch played by Malcolm McDowell and oh. our wash. Yeah. Brit. Yeah. Uh, wash See what happens. Yeah. <laughs> We got our swashbuckling Errol Flynn type played by Eric Balfour and our ingenue. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, Eric's Denise, great. Denise yeah. Richards. So uh, with Denise. And um, my Patrick husband Bo killed Eric. <laughs> See, there you go. Such a small world when a leather face kills you in the first scene, right? Exactly. That's right. That's, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there's nothing. That, I mean, I'm surprised Eric's even still acting after that. I mean, what else can you, <laughs> right. what else can you do? Um, my Leatherface experience, as you know, is uh, it was it was his uncle. Arlie Ermey got me with a shotgun uh, in the midst of trying to apprehend Leatherface. Um, Thomas was his name at that time, um, and this was. Uh, Massacre the beginning. So mine was uh, I had Jordana Brewster. There was the Jessica Biel oh, and Jordana yep. Brewster. So I had the Jordana Brewster. But the Time Crafters, I'm excited about. Nice. It, it's a pirate movie, and there's never enough of those. Hey, no. And, uh, no. And it and sounds time, fun. And time travel. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. So we're, we just were in the Cannes Film Festival, and um, we're in a bidding war with uh, Universal and uh, Netflix, so we're looking for, you know, actually the most, I, the most eyeballs, but I think we have to, we have to get some money, so, you know, Universal might be a, a, a good opportunity for us, or Lionsgate, you know. Yeah, yeah, that'd be so, great. So I'm excited for that. Um, one of the things I've done during the course of this pause, as I like to call it, is, uh, my wife suggested that I get engaged with the project or else I would drive her crazy. Uh, and she's <laughs> British, by the way. Um, it, that I read Lonesome Dove, the old trail ride, Larry McMurtry's, you know, not, not the mini series, but the actual book. So it's 102 chapters. So 102 days, every day, a chapter 
uh, and uploaded it on YouTube. So it's out there for free on Lou Temple's YouTube station. Um, but I did solicit some help. So I've got some friends that have come and, uh, and thrown in. Um, I wrote a script, a South Texas fishing story, coming of age fishing story, uh, which I just finished. So um, I've stayed productive. There's been two films that I just didn't feel comfortable going out to do that I passed on mm -hmm. uh, that were, one was here in Los Angeles, one was in Montana. They both actually didn't, didn't start production for, for I guess, uh, safety procedures. Right. And then there was one film that I'm scheduled to do in London um, that was supposed to happen this month, but it's not going to happen this month. We're still not allowed to go over there or anywhere by that, but as it goes. So, uh, so uh, just been waiting to get back to work, I think, like everyone, yeah. right? Trying to be, you know, trying to be industrious and do things and keep things, you know, moving. I, I have a, uh, I, I have a calendar that I try to stay very uh, fastidious to, a student of my calendar and task oriented and I check things off and feel good about my day. I hope everyone's doing something to, that when this gets done, they can say, look what I did. I did all this, right? Right. Yeah, I mean, it's hard. I, I find myself losing track of the days so easily because we're so stuck home yeah. that it's, you just go, wait, what day is it? Yeah, yeah, it's and when, crazy. Yeah. and and did, this day feels just like the last, you know, and nothing feels very new right. or different in the idea that you've even left your house for three days to be somewhere else isn't really happening, so. Um, right, it's the, it's the cruel reality of Groundhog Day as a reality. We are living it's that. So we, we are living it. Um, but I'm finding hope in it so yeah. you know i would i would guess that um, if we didn't have hope we'd be lost as usual true true yeah man yeah so let's see i'm 